So now we move on to parallel circuits. Uh, determine how do we handle the, uh, the math using parallel circuits. In this section we'll learn how to determine the impedance and phase angle of a parallel RL circuit. The impedance consists of a magnitude component and a phase angle component. Also inductive susceptance and admittance of a parallel RL circuit. So there's our parallel, our typical parallel um, configuration. One resistor, one inductor in the circuit with a sinusoidal source. So let's take a look at the math. Okay, so in this we've got some X sub L we need to deal with. We've got some pure resistance to deal with, some source, and then a current uh, through both branches. So if we take a look at the math for this, uh, for this configuration, what we've got here is our impedance ends up being, what does that look like to you? Product over the sum, so we've got a product over the sum. Notice we've got parallel, or parallel, we've got power, polar representation in the numerator, we've got rectangular representation in the denominator. So to handle this, the first thing we would have to do is use our conversion. So our conversion is again our typical Pythagorean theorem inverse tangent to gain the value of the angle. So once we do that, now we would have product, product, conversion in the denominator. So this becomes then the resistance times the reactance. We've got our sum in the denominator as the Pythagorean theorem and then our angle 90 degrees minus the inverse tangent because we're taking the value out of the denominator x sub L over R. So our two components then become the the product over the sum relationship and then our difference in the angle as we remove minus inverse tangent or whatever that value becomes so the angle becomes inverse tangent. R over L, notice we did an inversion here, a flip, because we are basically just changing you know, the sign. <clears throat> so let's take a look at an example. So in this example they want us to determine the amount of phase lead from the input to the output in each lead circuit. So for the lead circuit in A, we've got the 15k ohm resistor, we've got a 5k ohm inductor, we've already got the reactants calculated. So we can find then the angle, we're going to call it angle phi this time. Angle phi then is the inverse tangent of R over L, basically 5 divided into 15, the k's and the ohms cancel out, and we're left with 71.6 degrees. So the output leads the input by 71.6 degrees. For the lead circuit then in B, now we've got to calculate our, our, our reactants here because we're given our value in, uh, in Henry. So 680 ohms, five, 50 millihenries of inductance. So the first thing to do then is to calculate for our inductive reactants and when we do that with the 50 millihenry value we get 314 ohms of reactants. Take our calculate for phi this time 680 over 314 gives us an angle of 65.2. So the output leads the input by 65.2. Okay, take a look at another quick example here. In this case, we've got both values already calculated for us as our reactive term and our purely resistive terms. When we run this through the relationship, product over the sum, the inverse tangent of R over X sub L, we end up with then 100 ohms, 50 ohms for our values, product over the sum, inverse tangent, we get 44.7 at an angle of 63.4 degrees in ohms. Another quick one here, again we've got our reactants already calculated. In this case they want us to determine the magnitude of the total impedance and the phase angle. 
So it's just what we did before. Product over the sum, inverse tangent, 1k ohm, 2k ohms for our values, Pythagorean theorem in the denominator, inverse tangent, 1 ohm over 2k ohms, we end up with 894 at an angle of 26.4 degrees in ohms. So go back, work these, work these out, make sure you understand how to do these type of calculations on your calculator. Typically what I do is I start with the denominator and I'll do the math in the denominator to do the Pythagorean theorem. Your calculator may even have a Pythagorean theorem built in the library. Look and see. When you do that, when you get the value for the denominator, do an inverse. Now you've got a product of one term, two terms, and whatever the denominator value was inverted. Okay, and then do your inverse tangent. So when we come back, the next thing we need to look at is what are the shortcuts that help us to solve for these parallel uh, problems using conductance, susceptance, and admittance.